I'm going to go through the problem that was assigned for homework and, and the same part of this uh, video is also going to be to use your graphing calculator so that you know how to double check or when you actually have your graphing calculator uh, with you on a test you can use it um, just so we go through all the steps here. Okay, so stone was thrown from the top of a cliff. I'm making a picture. Got a cliff. That's my y-axis. Stone was thrown. It wasn't thrown straight down, it was thrown up in the air. And I know that because the number there is positive. So it was thrown up, shoom, gravity's pulling it back down. Uh, and there's an equation for gravity here. It must be a, on a different planet. It doesn't have the same coefficient we're used to. 60 meters above sea level. So right here was 60. So important things on my picture. I'm going to find the vertex right away and I'm going to uh, probably later on be, have to solve this some during some method. So I'm not even reading through the question. I know I'm going to find the vertex. So let's go ahead and find the vertex and just put it on our picture. So x equals negative b over 2a or t equals negative 20 over 2 times negative 5 so it comes out nice nice to 10 and so my time is 2 at 2 seconds we reach the height um, and now I'm going to show you from here on out you can plug this in by hand here and calculate out I'm going to show you how to do this in your calculator from here on out okay so I go to this is y equals I pushed y equals it's on my main menu and you have this on your computer uh, it's the Wabbit calculator pull it up and it asks you to browse for a face if you need help setting it up I can do that go to y equals and I'm going to enter the equation negative 5x squared notice that's what I push for x sorry I'll show you I push this for x right here x t theta n there's lots of different kinds of equations don't go alpha and find the x every time it's the slow way okay so I have the equation um, this is also help will help you think about uh, when you graph this what you're seeing now your graph probably when you push graph probably look like this and you're thinking oh this is not a helpful thing this is why I have you make the picture every time I know that my Y starts at 60 and goes up from there if you push window you can see what your viewing window is so this is the this is the key to any kind of graphing situation I want my x's, my x-axis, to go from a little bit past the y-axis over to the furthest I need to go is, pro is probably 4. If it's 2 to here, it's going to be less than 4. I'm just going to make it go to 5 so I can see. And then my y-axis, I'm not exactly sure what I want it to be, um, but I'm going to go from negative 1. I'll pick 100, and then I'll see if it works. So this, I don't know how hard this is getting launched up in the air. So I push graph. And so I want to be able to see the top of my parabola. If that didn't work, you go back and push window again and you adjust it. It's just like if you had to sketch it on your own, only you don't have to keep resketching it. All right, so I have my graph here. Anything I want to find on this graph, anything I want to calculate is under the calculate menu. And that's a blue lettering, so I'm going to push the blue button. Yours might be a different color. I want to calculate the maximum. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky for some people because it's not like a touch screen, user friendly. So it says left bound. I need to enter a number to the left of my maximum. I can push enter and then it asks for the right bound. And I go to the right and push enter. You can manually enter those numbers or you can just use that little four legged spider. And then I push enter and make a guess. So it says the maximum is at 280. Okay, so I just found out the Y value if I would have plugged that in there. So the maximum occurs at 280. That's gonna answer two of my questions, I'm sure, in this problem. 
The other place that I could find out what the value of 2 is, is I could go to calculate value. Enter 2. It's going to tell me 80. If I want to know the value of 3, I can do calculate value. And enter x equals 3. I go 3.25. And it's going to it's going to plug that in for me and it's going to go to that point in the graph. Okay. So I got a good graph. I also have under here there's a table and you can the x's are too big. I'm going to go I've used this table in other classes. So you can see then on the table what happens is the parabola starts at 60, goes up to 75 back down, or up to 80, back down to 75, 60, 35, 0. So you can kind of see all of the uh, detail there. The graph right now is probably a little more helpful. Okay, so find the time taken for the stone to reach its maximum height. We already did that. T equals 2 seconds. What is the maximum height? 80 meters. How long does it take for the stone to strike the water? When it hits the ground... The height is zero. This is saying, when is the height zero? This is your translation that you need to do. When is the height zero? So the height is zero. You can solve this any way you want. We just solved it several different ways. Last quiz, I'm going to divide everything by negative five. and I bet it factors, you could do the quadratic formula. Those are some big numbers, lots of different things. You could complete the square. Any of those methods work. Okay, so you need to find the two values of t. And remember we said, since we started right here, that one of the values of t is gonna be negative. One of them is gonna be positive. I look at my graph and I don't see everything here that I want. I know, I know what this factors into. I know this factors into t minus 6, t plus 2. So t equals 6. I know that's the answer, but I'm trying to help you learn to use the calculator too. So I'm going to change the window on my calculator. And right now I only see up to 5. I'm going to see up to 8 on the axis. So I'm stretching out the x's a little bit. So I stretch this axis. Now I can see this where it hits. Now, people like to do this and go, I don't see where it is on here. I'm going to go plug it There is another thing on your calculator that will, that will find that number for you. Okay? To do that, we need to be able to see the x-axis. I made this a little too close together. So I'm, I'm stretching out the y so we can see right where it crosses. And remember, this is called a zero of the function. I can calculate the zero. Now, you would love it if it said, go right on it and push enter. Some of the newer calculators will do that a little bit. It says left bound, so I need to go to the left. So this is the left, the domain left, hit enter. It says go to the right, hit enter, and go right on it and make a guess, six zero. I could also go to my table and see if it's a zero. And that's all nice when it's an integer. Um, it's not always going to be an integer, but this is how you use your calculator to help you figure out some of those things. Okay, I'm going to add a question to this that's not on here, and I'm going to say, when is the height equal to 73? How would I do that? Well, roughly speaking, we'll, we'll maybe do some of these later on, but roughly speaking, we know, if we go to our table, we know that between 0 and 1 it's 73, and then between 3 and 4 it's 73. If you go back to the graph and you push uh, what's called trace, you can kind of follow along and get a little more accurate. So at about 3.1 seconds, And 0.81 seconds, somewhere in there. If you really want to be accurate, we draw a line through that. That's the horizontal line. 
y equals 73. And then we know exactly where that happens and we could calculate the intersection. I'm not going to show you how to do that right now because you have access to the internet. How do I calculate an intersection on TI-84? 4,000 videos on how to do that. So do this problem like you usually do and then try to see if you can figure out the stuff on your calculator. See ya.